Hey everybody, welcome to my Kitchen Witch Challenge or course day one. I'm Kirsten Weiss and I've written this because I've written a lot of fictional books on witches and I like to be more calm and zen in the kitchen. I find myself getting really panicked and knotted up, especially as the holidays approach. And I'd rather not do that. And I suspect you'd rather not do that too if you're hanging out here with me. So today we're going to talk about spells and what makes spells work, what, how witches power their spells and how you can power your own life with magic, whether it's, you want to call it a spell or I don't know, Zen or otherwise. So I'm going to just talk for a little bit to give people a few minutes to get in. We'll be Facebook living for the next five days. This course corresponds to my Kitchen Witch Challenge that I created a few years ago for my Witches of Doyle series. Um, I've learned a lot since then and I've been doing more videos since then, so I wanted to add. So these videos are a supplement to the Kitchen Witch emails. You'll, you'll see stuff in the emails that isn't here. So if you would like to jump on the emails, it's not too late. You can sign up on my website if you go to kirstenweiss.com and then in the um, menu, go over to more, hit the drop down box and you'll see the Kitchen Witch Challenge pops up and you can sign up for the emails there. They're free. Again, I just, I just did them for fun because I like to do extras for my books. I have an extra for my Paranormal Museum series as well. And um, some of you may know I have a lot of extras for my Mystery School series. I've been going a little bananas with that one. Uh, anyways. Okay, I guess let's start. This is going to be casual because this is the first time I've done a Facebook live like this. So let's see. I wanted to ask everybody a question. What intrigues you about kitchen witchery? And options are, um, just curious. I'd like to be more mindful in the kitchen. And... I'd like to be more magical in the kitchen. All right, so I hope not published. Why can't you publish that? Oh, activate the poll. See, I'm learning. <laughs> Did it activate? I'm not sure if I activated. Let's try this one. Activate that. Here we go. Okay, now the poll seems to be active. All right, so. <clears throat> Let's talk about intention. I even have a whiteboard out here. <laughs> so I was reading a book by a friend of mine, The Ghost of Witches Past by Corinne O'Flynn. And she's a wonderful writer and she's also a friend. So you can take that as it was. But in one of the first pa earlier pages, she says, intention and visualization were the foundations of all magic. And I thought, oh my gosh, she gets it. That is correct. But of course, there's more to that as well. The infamous occultist Aleister Crowley said something along the lines of magic is creating change according to one's will. So but what is will? How does all that work together? Well, it does. Have you ever seen the movie Bed Knobs and Broomsticks? Um, I think it came out in the 70s. It's an old Disney movie with Angela Lansbury. I can't remember who started opposite her. It's set in World War II, and Angela Lansbury is taking a correspondence course on magic. And everything is working. She reads the spell, the magic happens. She's amazing. But the last lesson never comes. And so she goes to London. Spoilers here. She goes to London to find the man who created the correspondence course. And she does. And it turns out he's a con man. He found a book on magic, but the last chapter was missing. And he just basically chopped up the book and turned it into a correspondence course. And he is shocked because the magic never worked for him. He read the spells out loud. Nothing happened. He thought it was all bunkum. So why did the magic work for Angela Lansbury's character and not the con man's character? Well, the reason is Angela Lansbury's character was a magical person. She saw the world magically. She believed in it and she had a magical mindset, whereas the con artist didn't have that. 
So how do we get the magical mindset? Well, the clue is in Will, what Alistair Crowley said, and also what my friend Corinne also said in her book. It's all about will and visualization. And let me just break it down. So <clears throat> will it is intention multiplied by your focus. So you have an intention. Um, let's say I want to, I want to be more abundant. I want to be more abundant. I want to have more money coming in and you really focus on that. But how do you focus? Well, one of the ways, there are multiple ways you can focus. We use, witches use crystals and incantations and all sorts of other little tools to help them focus. But I think one of the most powerful ways to focus is through the use of visualization. So we have will is intention, focus, visualization. And then in order to power our magic, we have to charge it with something. It's not enough to want something. It's not enough to really think about wanting something. You have to power that with positive emotion. And I say positive emotion because positive emotion is more high vibrational. Once you've done all that, you can make magic. You don't even, you don't need an incantation. You don't need crystals. You don't need a magic wand. If you're really dialed in, magic starts happening around you. And some of that is you are changing. And so the world is changing to uh, accommodate that. In fact, I think most of it is that. But I also think there's just something else. We're all connected somehow. And if you can dial into that connection, everything just comes so much more easily. So I had a meditation for you. Um, I'm going to put it into the comments. I'm going to actually put it in the comments very shortly. I'll put it in the comments at the end of this, um, because if I don't, I will screw everything up. So I'm going to put this meditation in the comments, but let me just explain how this works. You don't need this meditation. It's just kind of helpful to do it. One of the biggest challenges I found when doing the magic is that last key charging with positive emotion, because let's face it, we're not walking around in a high vibe state all day. Some people maybe are, but I'm not, <laughs> I try to be, but I'm not. So how do you get into that state and how do you get focused? Well, there is a trick I was taught by a hypnotherapist, which I realized could be used to quickly, well, it's intended to quickly raise your emotional state. And I realized it could be used for magic as well. And what it is, is you think about an amazing time in your past for just 20 seconds when you were just joyful and confident and happy and super high vibe. And you just think about it for 20 seconds. And while you think about it, you make a trigger gesture. And I keep it simple. I just keep pinch my uh, thumb and forefinger together. You can pinch that finger to get the other finger together if you want, whatever is easy for you. So I pinch these fingers together while I'm thinking about that for 20 seconds. And then I let go and I spend the next 30 seconds visualizing my intention. And then to program yourself, once you've programmed yourself to do this, it comes really easily. So the meditation that I'm going to link to in the comments will help you program yourself. You're gonna do it over and over and over again about half a dozen times, pinching your fingers together thinking about that amazing time in your past, really visualizing it, how it smelled, how it sounded, um, how it felt, anything, any um, senses that you can remember from it. Really think about those, visualize those, and then switch, let go for 30 seconds, think about your intention. And I'm gonna ask you to just think about one intention today, um, which would hopefully be like being really zen in the kitchen or you know, cooking mindfully or, you know, um, visual, having your positive energies going into your cooking, having your love and joy and good health going into your cooking stuff like that, because this is a kitchen, witch course, of course, you can change up your attention to whatever you want it to be, but let's keep things kitchen themed for this week. So what you're doing by pinching your finger and forefinger together, it's just a physical trigger. So after you've basically programmed yourself for this. When you pinch your finger and forefinger together, 
you'll find that emotion coming up really easily uh, that you felt during that amazing time in your past. And then you can use that to power your spells, to think of your intentions. <clears throat> so, sorry, I have, I have notes. So what are your, and let me just do another poll. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Let's create another poll. What are your intentions in the kitchen? Now that we've thought about this. And hmm, actually, I don't know if it's going to work as a poll. Let's just leave it in the comments. Comment below and let me know some intentions you might have for being in the kitchen. What do you, how do you want to feel? What would it be like if you were mindful in the kitchen instead of, you know, rushing around? What would it feel like if you knew you were creating wonderful, healthy, life-giving foods for the people you were cooking for? Um, yeah, just what are your intentions? What do you want to get out of this? What do you want for your time in the kitchen? Let me know in the comments. <clears throat> Well, I look at my notes. <laughs> All right. All right. So this meditation, which I'm going to give you, um, if you listen to it, it'll lead you through it. It'll time you so you don't have to be counting one second, two second, three second, four second. Um, but once you've done it, you'll know pretty easily what 20 seconds is, what 30 seconds is. And just practice it. Oh, I love that. I love that, Kel. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, sometimes, it, so Kel says, I want to enjoy the time more rather than feeling like it's a burden. She's cooking a lot of healthy food and it takes time. And yeah, it does take time to make the healthy stuff. And sometimes that can get kind of stressful and it shouldn't, it shouldn't feel stressful. We should be feeling good in the kitchen. Um, not to put any pressure on you, Kel, but wouldn't it be nice? <laughs> um, Okay, so this week, I'd like you to practice the meditation and kind of learn it. And then I and then just practice it throughout the week when you have free time. I like to do it when I'm stopped at a stoplight. I obviously don't close my eyes when I'm doing it at a stoplight, but I'll just pinch my fingers together and think for 20 seconds, which again, you'll know pretty automatically by the end of this about a wonderful time, a wonderful time in my life. For me, it was I was at White Sands, New Mexico with my sister and we were sledding down these white sand hills and just laughing our butts off. It was hilarious. Anyways. Hey, Corinne. Oh no, Corinne's house has been fumigated. Okay. Well, at least you get to start over <laughs> and arrange the kitchen the way you want. We'll be talking on day four about turning the kitchen into a sacred space and ways to do that. So anyways, um, when I'm at, at a stoplight, I like to just pinch my fingers together Think about that wonderful memory for 20 seconds, let go, and then think about my intention for the day, whatever it might be. And it really seems to work to make things happen. And if you're hearing a lot of metal shaking, that's my cat. Um, so who has no sense of when I'm on a video or not. Anyway, so that is it for this week. We've actually covered, did I miss something? I feel like I've missed something. No, all right. We've actually covered a lot of ground in a very short period of time. Tomorrow we're going to be building on it, but practice the meditation. As soon as I end this, I'm going to put it in the links. So I put it in, if I can pin a comment on Facebook, I'll do that and listen to the meditation. I think it's about, I think it's about 15 minutes. Anyways. All right. Well, thanks for stopping by everybody. I'll be here again tomorrow and tomorrow we will be talking about something else. I am blanking on it now. What are we talking about tomorrow? Oh, aha. Tomorrow we're actually going into the kitchen. We'll be, I'll give you a quick recipe for an elderberry tonic, but we'll mainly be talking about not so much the spells and the recipes, but just how to be magical in the kitchen, how to be more mindful and how to build all that as to, to funnel your positive energy into your cooking so you can make magic. So thank you for stopping by and I will hopefully see you again tomorrow.